What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be covering all the targets that I'd be looking at going into round 10 of the AFL season. I've got a few players to cover, so strap yourselves in and enjoy the video guys. As you guys have probably figured out by now, I'm very value centric. When I look at my trading guys, I like to bring in guys that have upside. So we'll kick things off with defenders. The first guy I'm gonna talk about is Jordan Ridley. He's gonna be a super popular target this week. He's currently priced at 84, so there's upside there. I am a little bit concerned. It does look like he's had a slight roll shift. Hind, Redman, Heppel, these guys look to take the running role off halfback and Ridley looks to have a more Tom Stewart type role where he's involved in the switch kicks and he's playing more lockdown. He's lost a, a few of the kick-ins too, so he might not have the ceiling that he displayed at the start of the year, but I think he's still that 90 to 95 guy, so there's upside there and he's a strong target this week. The next guy is Caleb Daniel, slightly cheaper than Ridley. You're going to get a roller coaster ride with Daniel. You, you know he can score with the best of them when he's on, but he's susceptible to a tag. And Bevo, you never know. He has been switching up his role slightly at times, so he's an option at the price, but just be prepared to ride that roller coaster and take the highs with the lows. James Harms, I think James Harms is still a target. You've got to be wary that with Viney to come back, his role's probably going to change, but he has showed that he can put up high tackle numbers. I expect this to be consistent regardless of what role he's playing. And Melbourne said that playing Harms out of the midfield last year didn't work. They were looking to use him there this year. I think that when Ridley comes back, Harms will still be going through there. His numbers may decrease slightly, but I think it will be strong enough to still be able to average 85 to 90. So he's priced at 76. There's some upside there, and if you can get to him, that's all you can get to, then I don't mind it still. But this is the last week that you can possibly have to jump on board. The next few guys are super unique, super left field. These are for some guys that want to take some big risks. The first guy we have is Liam Baker, 566k. It's a little bit expensive for what I'd like to pay, but 118 last week. Did see high CBA numbers at 62%, so with plenty out in that Richmond midfield short term, he could be one that you jump on and ride up until the buy and hope he can keep up that 100 scoring ability, but they're super risky. You're relying on him maintaining that role. Definitely one for someone with big kahunas. Next, we have Nick Newman. Looks to have slotted into that Sam Doherty role in defense. Took the majority of the kick-ins last week where Doherty didn't take any. It looks like Carlton are gonna use Doherty more up on a wing. Newman's just slotted into that half-back role. We know Newman can score 90 when playing this role. His injury history is not great, so that's always a concern. But this is one that I do quite like. He's priced in that mid to high 70s, so I think there's quite a bit of upside here. He's one that you could bring in this week, but he's one that I'll potentially be bringing in, but... I just want to see another game first, so I'll be watching him, but he's certainly one that I'm interested in. And lastly, super left field. No one will be talking about this guy, but I think Mason Redman for the Bombers is a sneaky little option at the price. He's 470-ish, priced at 67, I believe. His last two games have been quite high scoring. 
He's taking the majority of the kick-ins at the Bombers, so he's taken that off Ridley. And his rebounding off half-back has been exceptional. They're looking to get the ball into his hands. So at the price, if you're getting some dead wood off the bench to him, I don't think it's the worst option available. Jumping into the midfield, so there's not too many guys in the midfield that I'd be super serious about targeting this week. There are a couple guys. I think the majority of the value is in defense. It just seems to be the trend this year, but in the midfield, we have Brad Crouch. He scored three tons in a row. Last week could have potentially been a 140 if he didn't spend all that time on the bench with that concussion testing. So we know he has the ceiling. We know he's got that ability to average around that 110 mark. It looks like he's hitting his straps now. And at the price, I think he's certainly a buy. He'll probably be the more popular target this week in the midfield. The rest of these guys I'm going to talk about are a little bit more unique. We have Patrick Cripps. He's been disappointing this year, but he's now priced at 87, which has him just over 600k. He's not one that I've ever really been big on, but he's very cheap. We know he can be 100 plus easily. Going into the second half of the year, you'd think that he would probably lift as Carlton potentially will be making a last final push to potentially make finals. But Paddy Cripps priced at 87, I think is value. He's one that I'd be certainly looking at or keeping a close watch on. Bailey Smith is another interesting one. Last week, we saw Trelaw get pushed out of the midfield. He spent about 32% at CBAs, if I remember correctly. Bailey Smith saw a huge jump. It didn't quite correlate to his score, but if he's to have this role going forward, he could be that 100 player or high 90s, and he's priced at 579 I believe, which is very cheap. So he's one that... I probably wouldn't be bringing in this week, but keep a strong eye on him. Concentrate on what his role is going forward. The last guy is Adam Chera. I quite like Chera this week, especially now Brayshaw has been confirmed that he won't be playing. Chera should get midfield time. If you exclude his injury affected score, he's been fantastic, averaging high 90s, so... He's currently priced at 83. I think he can be 95, potentially 100. So I think there's quite a bit of value here. There is a little bit concern over the injury. Their coach did say that he was sore, which was a slight concern, although he did say that he'll be getting up to play. So potentially he's one that gets managed. It does make me a little bit skeptical, but I do like him as an option at the price. And... Me being a Brayshaw owner, he could be my potential replacement. I'm probably going to be tossing up between Crouch or himself. So those are the guys I'd be looking at through the midfield. If we take a look at the forwards, there's a few options here. We'll start off with the more expensive one in Josh Kelly. So he's been very popular the last few weeks. I did bring him in last week, but... The thing with Kelly is now Toby Green's out. He's been named on that half-forward flank. We could potentially see Kelly get a roll shift, which sees him go back to half-forward where he's just playing that graveyard role where we saw what he was doing. He was scoring mid-70s, 80s, and I've got a fear that that could potentially be what's to come. So he's one that I've probably gone a bit cold on this week, and... While a lot of people would be looking to jump on board based off his recent form, I'd probably hold off this week just to see what his role looks like with Green in the side. A popular option I've been asked about is Sean Darcy. Do I think he's a legit option? And the answer to that is yes. I do like Darcy as an option. I think there's still upside there. He's in great form. He's the number one ruck for Frio. I think he can be high 90 average potentially and the fact that he has that ruck status too could come in handy if 
you were to have ruck issues in the future. So I do like it. I think he's a genuine option. The next guy we have is Dustin Martin. Probably will be the number one traded in player this week and for good reason. He's priced in that low 80 range. 81, I believe. History said he's gone 93, 97, 93 in the last three years. So he's going to go 90 plus this year. He always ramps up in the back end of the year. So now's the time to get on board. It will be a little bit of a topsy ride. You know that you're going to get some low scores. But for the most part, Dusty should average out to that 90 to 95 mark over the course of the remainder of the season. So I think he's a great option. And especially with round 13 forwards being slim, he's the one that I'd be getting this week. A couple of guys that are even cheaper. We do have Isaac Heaney. He's also one that's been talked about a bit. I do like Heaney as an option at the price. He's not going to get that midfield time. He's stuck at half forward, but if he can play half forward and push up the ground a little bit, I think he can still be 80 to 85, and he's priced at 67. So if you're getting a dead weight rookie up to him or potentially going a slight downgrade to him, say a Tom Power to him, which gives you some cash to go on top of some cash you might already have and get another premium that way. I don't think he's the worst look. He's got that injury history, but for the most part, he's very cheap, so I don't blame anyone that's looking at him. And he's one that I was highly considering before being dealt the Brayshaw issue. The last guy I want to talk about is Peter Laddams. Very cheap, and I was surprised that they opted to go with him solo ruck against Grundy. So he does have some tough matchups and it's very short term until Lysett comes back. So you'd want to be potentially jumping on now, riding up until round 14, jumping off board and, and taking that cash rise. But very risky play. If you get stuck with him, he could get omitted when Lysett comes back. So... Whilst his break even slow, he's not one that I would seriously be looking at, but he is very cheap and he's a risky play, but if it's all you can get to, then it might be worth taking that risk, although it is a pretty big one. So there you have it, guys. Those are the guys that I'd be looking at this week. Those are all the people that I think are underpriced and worth targeting. As always, I will have the trade guide up on the website where I might even cover a couple extra players. But for the most part, that's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for the lack of content lately. I've been super busy with work, but I am trying to make an effort to get these videos out for you. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like the video, drop a thumbs up. Drop a comment if you guys need any help with your side and I'll do my best to get back to you. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She